Hi everyone and welcome to this quick walkthrough of a typical project finance model. This is episode one in a two-part series. So what we're going to be going through in this video is the Operus financial model. It's an Operus PPP model template that's available for free download from the Operus website. You can go and read about Operus. Operus is a financial modeling company. They specialize in PVPs. They're based in the UK. And, and this is a great uh, template that's available for free online to ensure some uh, standardization when it comes to financial modeling. Now, this template is specific to the UK and will certainly need to be adjusted and tailored and tweaked to your specific project and your jurisdiction. But that's it. It's a great template just to go through to understand how a typical project finance or infrastructure finance model is laid out. So let's take a look. So we open up with a legal disclaimer, and this is actually something that you'll find in any uh, typical infrastructure model. There's a, there's a disclaimer that explains how the model is supposed to be used and who it was built for, etc. And then you can either accept or don't accept. And if you accept, what will happen is it opens up the model for you. So what happens in a project finance model is a well-built model has each section separated out onto different worksheets. So what we see over here is we've got um, inputs, we've got various inputs tabs, we've got inputs for actuals as well, which is very useful when you want to convert a financial model that's used uh, for financial close that's used for to raise the funding into an operating model. And I speak about that in one of my blog posts as well, the importance of converting a financial model, a financial close financial model into an operating model. We've got the workings, all the workings are typically calculated on one worksheet. A summary, which gives you a nice summary. Typically on a summary sheet, you'll find some nice graphs as well, showing you uh, debt service cover ratios, loan life cover ratios, project life cover ratios, debt amortization, etc. So just some nice visual feedback for the user. As I've spoken about before, project finance and infrastructure finance models, one of the reasons I really love them is that they're very cash flow focused. So there's a cash flow worksheet, and this is typically a cash flow waterfall. So you start with your revenue, um, then your operating costs, and then all of your senior debt. And then finally, um, you've got the uh, cash flow available for equity. So what you'll find is that you actually typically have a monthly or a quarterly cash flow sheet. So if you have a look here, this is quarterly, and then you've got an annual one as well, which then summarizes that. So financial positions, so you you have a typical balance sheet over here, so you can calculate some balance sheet ratios and also make sure that your balance sheet balances to make sure that the model is working correctly. You've got an income statement. Here you've got the annualized financial position, annualized income statements. So th this is a basic layout of a project finance model. So the different worksheet that I might include in some of my own models is a worksheet specifically focused on debt. So all of the debt calculations and the debt am amortization is calculated on that worksheet. You can include the ratio calculations in that worksheet because a lot of the ratios will be debt focused, you know, cash flow available for debt service divided by debt service, etc. I would typically include a separate worksheet for tax and depreciation as well. So you've got one worksheet that shows you all of your tax and depreciation calculations. So, so this is, you know, as a, as a free template, this is certainly quite comprehensive. So if we just go through it from the start, so we've got the terms and conditions of the disclaimer that we saw. We've got the, uh, a little bit of an overview of what Operus does. It says they advise us on project finance. Um, so they provide training. They provide model auditing, which is a key part of the financial close process. And I speak about the importance of our financial model audit and what is a financial model audit on the Financial Modeling Podcast blog as well. So go and check that out. They also provide software. Now, this software is really world class. I'll just speak about it for a moment. So I'm not in any way affiliated to Oak. But I have, um, or Operus rather, but I have actually purchased the Oak software, which is the Operus Analysis Kit. Uh, and this software is so comprehensive when it comes to auditing models, built a complete model map, um, it checks for errors, and it's got a, a lot of, of really great um, you know, features to that software. So it's something that I use on a daily basis, and I've purchased that from Operus. So this is a, a, a monitoring model, so you can see it's quite nice over here. So you've got the the, the summary, which is, is separated into project timings, so that'll give you, you know, when the actuals end and when the concessions end. So this is actually more of a, an operating model template, as you can see. So it's not a financial close model template, it's an operating model template. And this is, is useful for 
you know, managing an operating asset, uh, something that's an asset that's already in operations. So it's construction has already uh, progressed, or maybe you, you know, during construction, you want to manage the construction, but typically this is for an asset where you've already passed the construction phase and you want to manage the operations. So you've got the shareholder um, internal rate of return over here. You've got all the coverage ratios. So this is forecast only, uh, and this is obviously very key. This is part of the debt covenants, right? So you've got your senior debt service cover ratio, you've got your AD SCR historic, which is a historic annual debt service cover ratio, a forward-looking annual debt service cover ratio, and a loan life cover ratio. And typically what you'll see over here as well is a project life cover ratio, which is calculated similarly to your loan life cover ratio, but a loan life cover ratio only takes into account cash flows during the loan period. Project life cover ratio takes into account cash flows over the entire project life. So this is all for senior. And then if you've got mezzanine debt as well, or different tranches of debt, then you'll calculate your, your ratios for all the different tranches as well. Here you've got subordinated debt and it's just a coupon payment, which typically means in this case that maybe it's a, a bullet amortization schedule. So here you've got your senior debt, you've got an interest rate swap. So We've um, hedged the, maybe the base interest rate over here, so it's showing you what that would be and showing you the different margins. Why is it showing you four different rates for the margins? Well, sometimes in a senior debt, as you know, with project finance, if you've been listening to the, the project and the financial modeling podcast and been reading some of my blog posts, the debt is really long term, right? You're talking 17 year debt, 20 year debt, etc. So what happens sometimes is obviously your risk profile over the debt life does change. And what banks sometimes do is they have different margins. So what you find is during construction, that's when you um, the project is incurring, I guess, the most risk because you're not operating yet, you're still constructing. And that's typically when you'll find that the senior debt rate is at the highest margin during operations, it might ratchet down. And, and that's what you've got over here. So you might have different margins. And the margins are really um, used in a number of different ways. One of the ways that they can be used as well is to encourage projects to refinance um, or discourage projects to refinance. So that's how, why you might have different margins. That's just one of the reasons. As I said, one of the other reasons is obviously your risk profile does change over the project life. Maturity rate date rather of the senior debt. So you've got um, a second tranche of senior debt. So a similar output that you'll be able to see over here. Here you've got your reserves very key as well. So you've got your debt service reserve account. Um, and you can see it's your forward looking profile. And here you've got your MRA. What's an MRA? It's your maintenance reserve account. So if you're not sure about these different acronyms, go and read my blog post on project finance modeling, which explains all of these. So your maintenance reserve account is really going to be built up over time and it's going to be used for, for large expected maintenance in the future. So for example, if you're building a, a toll road and you need to incur some construction costs in year 10, what you're going to have is you might have an increasing maintenance reserve account over the first 10 years. So then year 10, you've, you've got the cash built up so that you can pay for it so that you don't strain your cash flows. So, so that's a, a, quite a brief overview of, of what the uh, project finance model might look like. As I said, uh, when I build it, I might have a few more worksheets, but this is obviously an operating model, not a financial close model. In the next video, we're going to take a look at some of the workings and how this model all fits together.